Before I start this video, I'd like to say a big thanks to Incarnate Media for the shout out he gave me on his channel. I really appreciate it, so if you want to check out his channel, the link will, to that will be in the description down below. But anyway, let's start the video. Hey guys, Mac Murphy here, and today we are back talking about Batman Arkham VR. Now, the game actually has a pretty cool story, even though I haven't actually uh, played the game because, well, look at the price of the PlayStation VR. It's 349 quid. I just don't have money like that just to be, you know, just, just psh, making it rain, okay? I don't have that kind of money. I'm pretty, I'm pretty broke. But anyway, instead of watching, I mean, instead of playing the game and experiencing the whole virtual reality. I just watched the gameplay on YouTube, so I do hope one day I can play it because it really looks it looks pretty cool. Even though, you know, you can't fight criminals or go in the open world or drive the Batmobile and all that Batman stuff. Because uh, I think the reason for that is the virtual reality technology is just not quite there yet. But after seeing this, um, there is potential in virtual reality. It's just not quite there yet, so... With some time, I'm sure virtual reality can be a really cool thing. But anyway, so instead of all that Batman stuff, like, you know, flying the Batwing, instead we get more of a detective story, and once you beat the game, there's also all these Riddler trophies you can get, which I fucking hate! But I did get all of those for my Arkham Knight Platinum, so thank you very much, Riddler. Now kill yourself. Anyway, let's finally talk about the story, so... The game starts out with you in the perspective of little, little Bruce Wayne in Crime Alley with his parents after seeing the opera. And, um, personally, what I would have actually loved is actually being in the opera. And, you know, because it's going to be all scary and stuff, and Bruce gets scared and goes up to his mother and you actually see it all in first person. It's coming to, up to your face. You know, like, you know, just think Batman Begins opera scene. That's what I kind of would have wanted it to be like. But anyway, you so you know you just go out, and that's where it starts. But you know whatever. Anyway, your parents get shot, and Joe Chill just gets right close up to your face and says, "This is what happens when you be the good guy," or something along those lines. Not sure if that's exactly what he said. But anyway, I thought the whole beginning part was pretty cool because you get to see the Wayne murder again, yes, but in virtual reality. Now after that sequence, Bruce wakes up. Bruce wakes up. Right in front of his piano because of his alarm, and Alfred comes up and pretty much gives you the key to the back cave, which you put in your piano. And also, what I notice is to your left, it looks like that's the bat telephone from the 60s Adam West show. But anyway, let's not get into that. So, Alfred tells you some information about Dick Grayson and Tim Drake and how they are both missing and haven't come back. So, you descend into the bat cave and suit up. Depending if you pick the Batwing or Batmobile, that is how you get to Dick's last location. Now, if you've seen my videos, then you already know this. I've also said this in like your know, promotional material. But anyway, you find Dick Grayson dead in an alleyway. It's just somewhere. And what is actually so cool is you do the whole detective mode investigation from, you know, Ark Margins and Night and all that. But this time in first person and virtual reality. So I thought that was actually really, really cool. Anyway, you see uh, that Dick was fighting some guy who beats the crap out of him, and uh, Dick tries uh, running away or escaping, but then, like, um, the guy gets his stun baton and throws it at his thing, which he, you know, uses to grapple away. He falls, fractures his bone, and then the guy snaps his neck like Superman did in Man of Steel to General Zod. Oops. Spoiler alert. Hyo, hyo, hyo. But what you actually learn from this investigation and this crime scene is there's actually a third guy witness witnessing this whole thing this whole murder scene and he's actually a penguin goon so you go to the iceberg lounge and pay Oswald Cobblepot a visit now what is really cool is that this map is actually it looks like it was taken from Arkham Knight like straight away just exactly ripped from that game although there was not an iceberg lounge in Arkham Knight that was in Arkham City, so that's the only difference I could spot out. But apart from that, everything looks the same in my eyes. Now, after you beat, you know, the Penguin's goons, you interrogate Penguin, and he, you know, gives you information about this uh, witness who saw it, who is actually in the morgue, so he's a uh, deader than Jon Snow in Game of Thrones. But anyway, that's told to you by the Penguin, and after a puzzle, you find Tim Drake's location, which is in the sewer. So. Before we actually enter the sewer, again, looks like it's an Arkham Knight map, again. 
But let's actually go into the sewer. But anyway, you find Tim, who is trapped, and while you are trying to free him, and do know this puzzle or whatever, you find Killer Croc shows up and kills Tim Drake right in your face. So Batman has lost all the Robins now. Jason is dead, Dick is dead, and now Tim is also dead. But anyway, afterwards, you're in an elevator and you hear an alarm, which is exactly the same one as, you know, the one in the beginning when you wake up. And now, you're in an elevator, which leads to Arkham Asylum. So this is actually so cool, because, you know, you're in Arkham Asylum, but in VR. And you even go into the check-in and all that, so this is all in virtual reality first person, so pretty cool. Anyway, you are led to the cells where you see Zaz and a few other cool stuff like the ventriloquist. But after all that, we see the Joker! Now, the way the Joker speaks to you, we know he's uh, dead. So that means this uh, game takes place in between Arkham C and Arkham Knight. So that's where this game fits into the timeline of the Arkhamverse. But in the same sequence, you find out who actually killed Dick Grayson and snapped his neck. And the key thing to remember is... This is, you know, after Arkham City, so Batman would actually still be infected with the whole Joker blood thingy, and so he'd still be, you know, becoming into the Joker. But you do see that when he actually looks into the mirror, he actually becomes the Joker. Well, actually, what happens is you turn around, like, first, you're, you're Batman when you look into the mirror, but then when you turn around, you're the Joker. And we find out that you actually killed Dick Grayson. Batman himself kills Dick Grayson. So, yeah, pretty much like a big mindfuck and, you know, does have like a little bit of horror elements into the end. So, it looks pretty cool. Wish I could experience it in VR, but I couldn't. Instead, I witnessed it with some dude with virtual reality headset with his, like, green screen into the game saying, oh my god, this is so cool. Well, I'm just watching with my computer. Uh, but yeah, pretty cool. So, this is kind of like Inception, and let me explain why I think that. So, when the game starts in Crime Alley, that is a dream, 100%, because of the alarm. But we hear that same alarm when you enter Arkham Asylum, so the entire game is actually a dream. So, in the sense, the game is canon because it is a dream, and we know the Joker is dead, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Now, Bruce is infected, and he's having this nightmare about killing... Uh, Dick and Tim is also dead as well from Killer Croc, so this actually makes so much sense why in Arkham Knight he doesn't allow Tim or Dick to tag along because he's afraid that he will kill him and go nuts. So this way they will be safe because they are far, far, far away from him. So that's why he, you know, distanced them away from him. And don't be mistaken because this is definitely a dream because we do see Tim and Dick in Arkham Knight. So, let's say you were, you know, not familiar with the Arkhamverse and you played Arkham VR, then you'd probably think that was actually the actual game and you actually did kill Dick Grayson. But, if you are familiar with the Arkhamverse, then you know that this is a 100% a dream. So, yeah, technically it's canon. And, yeah, as you know, after Arkham Knight, Batman is cured and Bruce is no longer Batman. So, this does indeed 100% take place in between Arkham City and Arkham Knight, so that's where this game stands in the Arkhamverse timeline. But yeah, that was a pretty cool story. Just a shame I couldn't experience it in virtual reality. But that shit, it was just too expensive, okay? Like, buying the virtual reality and also the game for like 20 quid, just nuh. But yeah, I really enjoyed doing this video, and if you enjoyed, then why not like and share, and don't forget to subscribe if this is your first time coming across my channel. Because we make DC gaming videos like Arkham VR right now and Injustice 2 and much, much more including Batman the Telltale series. But anyway, this has been Magma Finney signing out. Peace.